sometimes that seems like just magic, right? Like my kids will be like, well, can I just have your card? Yeah. Like, just no. give me your card. It, it's free money. money yeah, there. I know. It's going to work. That's how, that's how things work. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's like, no, let me explain how this actually goes down, everybody. What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amuse bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to episode 59 of The Perfect Bite. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and Angelina's Pizzeria and Italian Kitchen is a longtime favorite. Next, we'll talk about getting your children comfortable and involved with finances. And finally, we'll share some cooking habits to stop doing. Each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope will become your new favorite. This week, I'm going to share a personal favorite, Angelina's Pizzeria. Angelina's has been around for a very long time, a very, very long time. I remember uh, this location opening on Sloan in Charleston. This is where my, uh, my dad lives. This is where I grew up on the east side. And going here for the very first time for a holiday Christmas party at like one of my very first jobs. And, and just, I've never been there, so I'm you know? excited to hear more about it. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, it's really, it's like a pizza joint, but the thing that I like about this place is it's kind of like a beyond menu, I will say. Okay. So it's not, you know, pizza, wings, garlic bread, a salad. They've got so many different types of pastas on their menu, and that's one of the things that we had when I went to this Christmas party long ago. So that's kind of like what I what I go to. I always got to try one of their pasta things, but they've got a huge variety. So like fettuccine, cacciatore, stuffed shells, lasagna, spaghetti, like any kind of pasta. Pasta, they've got it. For the most part, it tastes really good. The thing that I ordered when I went most recently um, was like a combination. So I did the pepperoni and sausage pizza, baked CD, and mild wings. The pizza sizes are kind of like, you know, when you go to the the independent pizza places, they, they're they huge. Mm-hmm. Huge pizzas. So it's plenty. When I go there, it's usually when I'm going to visit my dad. So I've got the kids with me, my dad, my sister. It's like a big thing. So we can order one of their extra large pizzas and it's plenty. The order of baked ziti, mild wings. We usually do like a 20 piece. It can be a little bit pricey, maybe like uh, 60 bucks or so. But for that amount of people that we're feeding, it's the perfect amount. Portions are huge. The sausage chunks, it's like the real sausage, big mm-hmm. chunks of sausage. I just really love going there. It just makes makes me feel good. Yeah, I'm just trying like it. comfort food. It sounds like the Italian kitchen side of it's a little stronger yes. than the pizza. Like, not stronger, really but is. there's more options than, like yes. you said, just pizza. Exactly. So what would you get if you weren't getting pizza then? If I wasn't getting pizza, what I would want to try is actually something that I, I, re- I saw um, – on the menu recently is their Athens fries, which I was kind of... Like a Greek fry? Is that yeah. what it is? It's like a Greek fry or even their buffalo chicken fries. So that kind of makes me think of like um, carne asada fries a little mm, bit, mm-hmm. which Sounds I love. Good. So I didn't know they had that there. So I would do that. So make sure of, you know, the fries with meat, cheese, sauce. I would love to do that. Uh, my run recommendation is if you are planning on going, order through their online website or call in directly. It may have been a fluke, but when I did it, I ordered through like one of those side apps mm-hmm. and the restaurant did not get the order. Something was hmm. wrong with the system, so they had to like resubmit it. They were super nice and threw in an extra pizza, but um, <laughs> just avoid that just in case there's any issues. Order online, call them directly for that order. Well, if you have a recommendation or a restaurant for us to try here at The Perfect Bite, send us a message at theperfectbite at ccculv.com. We're always open for new ideas. We're wrapping up Financial Literacy Month, which happens each year in April. This is usually a time to get a better financial standing for the future. Today, Shannon's going to share ways to give both you and your children money confidence. So financial literacy or wellness means being confident to make wise decisions with your money. And something that we hear often and I think about all the time is, how do I get my children involved with money conversations? And we really want our kids to thrive, right? We want them to learn while they're still 
under our roof before they go out into the world and make these maybe bigger, more impactful financial decisions on their own. So if we can help them with day-to-day tasks now that will help them understand financial decisions, I think that that would be just the right stepping stone to get them to those adult decisions later on. So between Crystal and I, we have nine children. Yes. So <laughs> we are the people that are going to talk to you today. We're, we're the ones in the trenches here with our kids. And so really experience is the best teacher. How do we help our kids have more experiences with money now where they can make small mistakes mm-hmm. before they make the big mistakes? So we're going to talk a little bit about some really easy lessons and formal ways that you can get with your family and let them experience financial tasks and issues and just understand how money affects them. So a really great example is a trip to the grocery store. It's a perfect time for your child to get some practice regardless of their age. So I will say I go to the store less and less lately. I do a lot of online shopping and a lot of pickup. Get them involved with that too. They, they love technology. They love apps and, you know, websites. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, add to the card. Okay. That seems so easy till it actually costs money, you know, (laughs) add, add, add. So if your kids are like pre-K, early elementary, just help them understand that everything you're buying costs money. You know, that little card you're using is not just a a free, Mm -hmm. free swipe. It's actually tied to money that's been earned that's in your account. So when you check out, maybe let your child, if you're in person, let your child swipe the card or, or hand the money over to the cashier and explain the transaction, how it works, how it goes back to your bank how your paycheck puts the money into the bank and how it all ties together. Sometimes that seems like just magic, right? Like my kids will be like, well, can I just have your card? Yeah. Like, just give me your card. It's free money. money Yeah. It's just going to work. That's how how things work. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, no, let me explain how this actually goes down, everybody. Um, If they're a little bit older, elementary school, maybe give them some money, $5. Um, Explain to them that they can spend it however they want, but show kind of the trade-offs. Like if you pick this one more expensive item, that means you can't get the smaller items and, and vice versa. So each thing you're choosing means you can't buy that other thing. Exactly. Um, we recently did an activity um, with our church group where I thought it was so smart. There's a little bit older kids, middle school. They were given um, an app. They got on the McDonald's app. Okay. And they got to all order what they wanted. And so they plugged into the app what their order was. And then they saw the total mm-hmm. for this group of like 10 middle school boys, which of course was probably a lot of food that they wanted to order. And then the next activity was to take that much money Mm -hmm. and see how much groceries they could actually buy and make a meal with that. And I thought, yeah, I have like genius because eating out is not cheap, even at, you know, fast food places. And so they were able to make like a full, really nice dinner Mm -hmm. with dessert, with appetizers, bread, all this extra stuff with the same amount. And so it was sort of like a really great comparison side mm-hmm. by side of how the Is money. Is it really worth it? <laughs> exactly. Um, and if they're in high school, let your high school kid go grocery shopping for you. Give them your budget and grocery list and let them experience what it's like to budget the money and make a decision in the store. Am I going to buy this generic item? Do I want to buy the brand item that I know we all like better yeah. and then have to buy something else that costs less? These are the kind of trade-off decisions that you make all the time when you're budgeting and spending your money. So um, just starting today, make it a habit. Let every family member, no matter how old they are, get involved in handling the money, making discussions about financial topics, a normal thing within your home. So after all, we're really trying to just get everyone comfortable and confident with the finances. Do you do anything like that, Crystal, or anything come to mind with me? We we do a, a couple of different things. I know like with Violet, so she's three. One thing that she's been doing, because again, we don't go to the grocery store as mm-hmm. often, but um, she'll she has these little play carts, you know, little grocery carts, and she'll she'll load it up with stuff, and she's like, okay, I, I need to check out, and I'm like, okay, come on over, and she gives me the item, and I tell her how much it costs. She's she will even like mimic. She's like, I don't have enough money. I'm like, okay, we well, got to put it back. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. And then for my older kids, they are actually now doing the in-person shopping for me for the most part. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll give me and Rodney will give them a list of what we need to get. OK, here's my card. Go out and shop and they'll come back and tell us stories like, oh, the price of this went nice. up. And I'm like, awesome. They're, they're seeing it. They understand. You know, What I have to look forward to when I have drivers <laughs> <laughs> who can go. So if you're looking for some additional resources, we have a lot on our website, ccculv.org. We have a free financial partner called Bonsai, and there's actually some courses on there that are also free to take, 
Bonsai Junior, Bonsai Teen, and Bonsai Plus. And that kind of walks you through these day-to-day decisions of what do I spend my money on? How do I decide, you know, what's worth spending the money and then seeing the effects of those decisions. So it's a really great tool and I could just see that being a, a great family night activity as well. Now we'll take a break to hear from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $73 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. This year, we returned a $2.6 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately insured by American Share Insurance. Next up is our Future Self segment inspired by the Happiness Project. From food safety concerns to improper food stores and just habits that don't make much sense, today we're going to share some habits that you should ditch in the kitchen. Following these tips will definitely help you avoid some troubles that would make your future self possibly sad or even sick. So the first topic that we're going to talk about is leaving leftovers on the counter all day. And I know we've talked about this in previous episodes. Mm -hmm. So the recommended timeline from the USDA, um, they say that it's okay to leave leftovers on the counter for up to two hours. Beyond that, there is a potential for bacterial contamination. So the safest thing to do is immediately package leftovers and place them in the fridge. Um, I think so. See, when we talked about this with our power saving, Mm -hmm. that when you put hot food in the fridge, it heats up your whole fridge and now the the refrigerator has to work harder to cool down. So Now I'm at a a, a crossroads. Okay, set that timer. (laughs) Two hours to cool. (laughs) Man, it's hard being an adult. I can't think of all these things. (laughs) Next one, again, another Mm -hmm. one we've talked about is thawing meat in the sink while at work. So similar to cooked foods, raw meat should not be left out at room temperature for longer than two hours. So that means if you are planning to take something out to thaw, do it in the refrigerator 24 hours in advance. Plan those meals in advance so that they can thaw out. The recommendation they did say using cold water however in a previous episode Mm -hmm. we said conserve your water don't do that (laughs) plan ahead plan ahead exactly another recommendation um to to stop doing in your kitchen is rinsing chicken in the kitchen sink this is something i'm like so torn on this um (laughs) i grew up cleaning my chicken i just want it to be clean but According to the experts, it's not necessary. So rinsing your chicken can spray germs up to three feet from the sink. That's, That's pretty horrifying. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. they, they said if you must clean your chicken, instead pat dry the chicken with the paper towel and that will remove most of the mo- moisture. So that will give you a little bit, give you some comfort in that, I guess, hopefully not seeing the, the, the wetness of it. And if you absolutely must rinse the chicken, be sure to sanitize your sink and three feet around the area afterwards. Oh, that is not worth yes. it. No, Count I'm not. Your, tops, your floor, <laughs> your clothes, change your clothes out. Yeah. No, um, no, no. So yeah, just just don't don't rinse it. It's not necessary. That's something I got to keep telling myself. Another thing to stop doing is stop storing tomatoes in the crisper drawer. And this, I mean, honestly, hmm. it makes sense um, when you when you buy tomatoes. They're not they're refrigerated. Just, no, yeah. they're not. All the veggies are just out mm-hmm. there in their crates. Putting tomatoes in the crisper drawer in your refrigerator is the worst place to store tomatoes. The temperatures are below 60 d- degrees and they will turn your tomatoes to mush, basically. Um, so instead, leave them on the counter. Unless they're already cut, then yes, store the remaining piece of that tomato in the fridge until you are ready to use it. And then um, the next one is putting cracked eggshells back in the container. Is this something you do? Oh, gosh. Yes. (laughs) And my mother-in-law thinks it's so gross, but I'm like, no, it's gross that I have to try to get it to the... Yeah, I don't want it to spill, so... Man, I got lots to work yes, on with this stop one. Stop doing this mm-hmm. because this is also a bacteria issue. When you put the cracked egg back in the carton, there is a chance that the raw egg can transfer onto the unused egg, which put, puts you and others at risk at foodborne illness. So what if you spent, you know, let's just say 25 years building up a cookie dough raw <laughs> egg immunity? <laughs> Then you're safe. I think I'm good if I haven't gotten sick you know, yet. All those cakes I baked and dipped my fingers in. Exactly. I, I'm safe. It's fine. 
<laughs> well, mm. many of us have picked up bad habits over the years. Um, we might not even realize how bad they, they can be, but this list is saying that it is, it is not the best uh, way to do it. So it's Fine. time to recognize them and lead them in the past. <laughs> <laughs> um, besides the eggshells, are there any of these other ones that you do? Uh, the leftover thing, I, I think that one, I mean, I'm kind of OCD about it. So I, I definitely want to put it in immediately while it's hot. But then I was trying to not do that. So it feels yeah. like all these things, honestly, all the things we talk about just require like an intentional thought and like forth for planning. Like you have to think about it in advance. And that's just hard sometimes. And if you're it like, I'm I'm rushing, I'm just going to. Stress, stressful adult life. It's right. Just, just I just want to thaw this knee. And... Exactly. So exactly. if you have the, the time and these things all the things we talked to you about, like, you know, some of them you have to decide what matters most to me. Yes. Does it matter most to me that I don't have the bacteria and I'm just going to get it in the fridge and then I might have to spend more money on my power bill? Okay. You know, just make make those choices. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. We'll do our best. Well, there is a full list. This is just five of the list, um, but there's a full list that we will link in our show notes from allrecipes.com. But yeah, keep that in consideration, recognize them, and try to leave them in the past. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was The Perfect Bite.